What's good? You're not rocking with the best. Ro Parrish in the building. Of course, you're watching the warm up presented by Ford. I'm who, who by... we rocking with? Oh, we're rocking with the best right oh, now, Jack. Oh, yeah. Go give me some. Give me some one more time. <laughs> there it is. You know that's how he starts off all the show. Every show. That, that, that's his that's his famous tagline. It's not mine. I just borrowed it. Shouts out the whole, shouts out to Diddy, but I affectionately like to call you the Big Petty. Yes, indeed. Brendan Haywood is here with us, and of course, the Hall of Famer, Zeke. Much love as always. Thank you, brother. Of thank course. You. Now, thank you for joining us today. Of course, big things popping today. This is my first time on the warm up. And before we get things started, I want to shout out Chris Miles, who yes. just had a baby. Him and his lovely wife it is uh, Issa Simone. So he couldn't be here today. So salute to you and your family. We're going to hold it down for you in the meantime. But congrats, Chris. Hey, hey. Congrats, Chris. Listen, the fun guy, though. We know he's back in Toronto. This is the first time okay. that he's back since he won that chip, taking on his former teammates tonight. Oh, man, I can't wait to check it out tonight, 7 p.m. Ben, the king, LeBron James, heading to Orlando to face the Magic. The road trip is in Orlando. Can the streak continue? This winning streak has just been absolutely ridiculous. I love that picture. I mean, that's, that's, that's greatness. Zeke, imagine if you guys could take pics and post them back in the day when you was with the Pistons. Hey, y'all, y'all, didn't, y'all didn't take pics with the Polar Boys back no, in the day? No, we, we couldn't have shown our pictures. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zeke, it's a family uh, show, uh, man. Uh, <laughs> but as uh, you see, uh, right? Round ball one on the bad boy plane, we couldn't have shown our pictures. <laughs> oh, man. But the picture right here is awesome, especially the stats. You see what happened the first game. Ever since then, they've been balling out of control. All the numbers are spectacular. Zeke, the, the, the first question I pose to you, because I, I see what the Lakers have done. Obviously, they've played well. But are they peaking too early at this point? And is that even possible with this type of team? No, I, I really don't. I, I don't think they're peaking too early. I, I think what, what's happening is the, the chemistry is coming together so perfectly and so good that I, I think people now are seeing the brilliance of LeBron James' leadership and understanding how he leads. I mean, this will be the third team or the third franchise that he potentially could take to a championship and possibly win with, with just a, a different set of guys. And when you talk about LeBron, in my opinion right now, he's the best point guard in the game. Uh-oh. Uh, wait, 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 what? Yeah, because he's at the point position right now. Okay. So when you look at him, you know, he feeds the post well. Most guys have a difficult time feeding the post. And when he drives to the lane, look at the attention he, he, he draws, okay? One, two, three, all eyes on 23, draw and kick. I mean, shooters open all over the place. He's unselfish. He's not a selfish player. And, and you may want to run that one back, D, because that dime he just dropped to mm. Dwight Howard, I don't mm. think people really saw how smooth that was. But again, driving to the basket, drawing all eyes on LeBron. How do we stop LeBron James? Well, you can't because he's a willing passer. And when you are a willing passer and you are a giver and you are a servant out on the floor, Brendan, you know this, you make all, you make all the players happy. And right now what he's doing in particular, he's making the big men happy and he's bringing them back to life, not only on the offensive end, but he's inspiring them defensively also. Yes, uh, LeBron is a, is a great leader. I had a chance to play with him my last year in Cleveland. And one of the things is just how he tries to work everybody else in, let guys be themselves, but then understand they are part of a team, a part of something bigger. And he always has these little goals he sets for the yeah. team. I think he's doing a great job this year of inspiring this team. And then at the same time, I think he does a great job with the big. When we talk about Anthony Davis, he feeds him on and off the court. He he always says the right things in the media. It's Anthony Davis' team. We're only going to take it as far as he goes because he's trying to prop up his confidence. Mm-hmm. And then on the court, he finds him for the lobs. He builds up guys like JaVale McGee also, always finding guys like JaVale and Dwight Howard inside for the easy dunks because he takes up so much attention from the defense because one man can't guard LeBron. It takes three, four, five guys. And when all eyes are on him, he does a great job of passing the ball. So I like the way this Lakers team is playing. There's another level that they can get to, though, because I think Kyle Kuzma right now can step his game up. And he's the one that he was he was hurt. So he yeah. didn't get the, he didn't get the training camp. But he didn't get to work in with everybody else. Probably the first probably the first time in a long time in his career that he's been the third option. And the third option is always the most important option of any big three, because the third option has the most that he has to sacrifice. So he's working his way in there. I think they're going to need him as a true third option to win a title. Mm-hmm. Because when you look across the hallway in L- with the Clippers, they have that third option. Hey, Lou hey, Williams. Hey. 
Hey, hey, hey. All right, Kawhi. So, so, <laughs> so I think that Kuzma has to step his game up. I like where they are right now. I think Kuzma's going to step his game up as the season continues to uh, go along. And that's when we're going to see the Lakers play even better than what they are right now. Yeah. And that's scary. Well, we talked yeah. about them playing better. What about defensively? We know that AD before the season put everybody on notice that he was going to be a candidate for defensive player of the year. who's going to hold LeBron accountable. But what about Frank Vogel, though? How much credit does he deserve? Because he seems to be the man that everybody forgets in this situation. Uh, he deserves a lot of credit. And not only does he deserve a lot of credit, you know, his, his staff also deserves a lot of credit. When you look at Jason Kidd and Lionel Hollins, I mean, they got a, a, a complete basketball staff in terms of understanding the game, defensive philosophy, offensive philosophy, playing in big moments, championship moments, coaching in big moments. So, you know, the brain power that they're bringing to the game, you know, every night and the information that they're giving to the players is pretty complete. And you can tell that it's complete because the players are buying in and there hasn't been any bickering. I've, I've been very impressed with what the Lakers have done defensively, and that has been something that surprised me because last year, let's be honest, that defense was bad. It was laughable. And yeah. LeBron James was part of the problem. When you put on the film, LeBron James wasn't giving the same effort that you're used to seeing. This year, the effort is back. I think some of that has to do with, with AD. I think some of that has to do with Frank Vogel and his schemes. And we're getting, the, we're getting LeBron to fly around the court again like he, normally, like he normally did, and I think that helps this team. Having AD on the back line of that defense, Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, all those shot blockers on the back line of a say, defense. Say those three names again. I Anthony mean, Davis, I mean, JaVel McGee, and Dwight Howard. And, and Zeke, t stop me if I'm lying. When you're a wing or a guard and you know you have shot blockers behind you that are going to make up for your mistakes, you can be a little bit more aggressive. Oh, I'm you straight can dog a, out You front. can take a couple more gambles. You can press up into your man. Yes. You can shoot the passing lane. The Lakers' six in defensive efficiency for a reason. Part of that is the scheme by Frank Vogel. Part of that is the big men blocking shots, and the other part of that is LeBron James taking his defense up yeah. to another level. Yeah, awesome. We talked about three guys that you named. How about the three guys that we that we named also? Jason Kidd, Frank Vogel, and Lionel Hollins. Great coaches all came through NBA TV last year, too. That's so right. You see the That's connection? Right. You see the That's connection, right. dog? There it is. Lakers taking on Orlando 7 p.m. Eastern on League Pass. There's the bearded one. It's been a while since I've seen him go for 40. Seems like he's playing beneath his expectations. What? Cleveland's on the schedule tonight, though. What's That's gonna happen? Check it out. Good eating out there in Cleveland. Hey, definitely some good eating. Can't nobody. So I had I had my eye on this Hawks Heat game, and the Hawks might have stayed in at South Beach two nights ago because they played well against the Heat. They were leading throughout two nights. You two said nights it. ago. Yeah, they must have stayed in because they played well, <laughs> and they were up in the fourth quarter. And then, um, you know, Trey Young, you'll see right here, he made a nice play. You know, you'll see he's he's got the ball. You know, a little ISO. Trey Young, he had himself a nice game. They're feeling good about themselves. Makes this great pass to Len. Len dunks it. Watch Trey Young here. He gives the it's over sign. He gave the Vince Carter it's over it's sign. It's over wasn't now. Over. It wasn't over because Jimmy Butler hit that three to tie the game. And then in overtime, it wasn't even close. It was not close. Not even close. They won by 14 in an overtime game. Like, you don't see numbers like that. The Heat just completely destroyed the Hawks in overtime. Jimmy Butler triple double. Bam at a bio triple double. Two triple doubles from the same team. Jalen, what did this win show you about both teams, the Hawks and the Heat? I know for people that's been following this program for nine years, you understand what I'm about to say about the Miami Heat. What two words am I about to use, Jacoby? Player development. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Just think about this. Bam not only had 30 as a big guy, mm -hmm. didn't you say he had a triple-double? Triple-double, 11-11. Just, just think about, just think about that for a second. If you've been watching, you talk about player development. If you've been watching Bam Adebayo, he's not a natural passer. You know what I mean? Like his, like he wasn't known for passing. He wasn't a distributor. He's not a playmaker for others. But if you play with the same team with the Heat, I think he's been on the Heat for, what, two, three years now? They'll develop you into one. I got another guy I want to mention. Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson. Out of Michigan. How many threes did he hit? If you were going to tell me that there's a white guy on the Heat's going to hit 10 threes this year, I'd be like, oh, Tyler Hero. <laughs> Tyler Hero. Nope. Duncan Robinson. Where did he go to college? University of Michigan. Oh, that's right. Okay. And also Kendrick Nunn. The two of them had 36 and 34. Just think, say that again. The two of them, Kendrick Nunn, undrafted, Duncan Robinson, unheralded, 36 and 34. <laughs> and Bam had 30 with a triple double. It's crazy. So now you sign Jimmy Butler, an all NBA caliber player, you got something special in the Eastern Conference. And what do you always say about Jimmy Butler? Jimmy Butler goes hard, man. He's a leader. You say that when you need a bucket, end of the game, shot clock running out, fourth quarter, crunch Where's Jimmy? time. Jimmy. Where's Jimmy? And he proved that. Jimmy. He proved Jimmy that Jimmy ball. yesterday. However, I do want to point out because I watch a game. 
He missed a game winner. He did. He missed like a 15-footer. He did. He like did. An open that was a good footer. shot, though. Yeah, he step back. That was back. a good shot. But it was a, it was a you know, open 16-footer, nothing crazy for the win that we all thought were going down. He thought it was going down. He started to celebrate, rimmed out. But that's what I mean by coaching and player development. You just said it. Even though he missed a shot, mm -hmm. what type of shot was it? It was a really good shot. Oh, yeah, it was a great shot. You live with it, right? Of course. And then you go to overtime, you beat the brakes off the uh, opponent. I wasn't even close in overtime. I wasn't even close in overtime. Jalen, it is time for some very important, very special news that matters.